My name is Mandisa. The direct translation is sweetness or she who by her presence brings happiness. Now, growing up as a black girl in South Africa with a Kosa name but being unable to speak Kosa has been extremely challenging. I still remember how rough my first few days at West of the were. A group of girls approached me and started speaking in Kosa. They were quickly put off by the fact that I continually responded in English. Little did they know that I couldn't actually speak Kosa. They thought I was being rude, snobbish, thought I was acting too white. But I just couldn't speak Kosa and I didn't understand why that was such a big deal. In actual fact, I was failing second edition of Kosa. And let me tell you, the look on Ms. Mabokata's face when she realized that the only black girl in the class was failing Kosa was absolutely priceless. But what was even more priceless was the look on Mishe's face. I met Mishe at a new church. She welcomed me with the biggest hug and the brightest smile, and then proceeded to speak to me in Kosa. Now, at this stage, I'm feeling a little bit awkward because I don't know whether it would be appropriate to stop her mid-sentence and tell her that I don't actually understand a word that she's saying. Eventually, I muster up the courage, and I do it. I say, I'm extremely sorry that I don't speak Kosa, but I'm learning. She says at me with this emotionless expression, and I quickly go into defense mode by explaining that my surname is Banda, which isn't even South African, and she should pardon me. And she gives me this awkward smile. She's probably thinking something along the lines of, oh, please, Mandisa, stop acting white. Who does she think she's fooling? Is this girl serious right now? Those are all things that I've heard before. She then proceeds to say, lol, how can you even call yourself black if you don't speak our language? In the most condescending tone. But I don't blame her. Just like I don't blame other children for thinking that I'm acting too white when I continuously respond in English despite being addressed in Kosa. Sometimes when people ask me what my name is, I have to think twice before telling them it's Mandisa. I often tell them my second name, Edlene just to avoid the drama and just to avoid having to explain myself because I don't owe anybody an explanation. I don't know how many times I've had to spill out my life story to a complete stranger. And because of this, I've had many people tell me that I simply do not belong to the black community and that I'm a disgrace. But my blackness isn't determined by my name, the language I speak, and neither is it determined by my enunciation and diction. I'm so sick of people telling me that I'm not black enough because I don't conform to their construed idea of a typical black girl. To be told that you're not black enough for anything is an insult that is insurmountable in so many ways. The judgment that someone acts white is a verdict against that person deeming their mannerisms, voice, or interest break the preconceived rules of race. And I urge you to stop. Just please stop. Because I'm not acting white. In fact, I'm acting very black. I'm acting black because it's okay for black people to speak English. And it's okay that black people don't conform to your constructed idea of what a typical black person should be. The fact that I am here today taking up space is enough because I am enough and quite frankly I've had enough. I'm unable to converse with my people in a language other than that of the white man but believe you me I'm working on it and I'm working on it for me not to please you and I'm learning to embrace my name and I plan to live up to its meaning. Ngosi, ngokudi, mamela. I am Mandisa.